Hello students, once again welcome back to Mizu STD video classes. As you know this very interesting, important and useful chapter, practically really very useful chapter that is rotational dynamics is going on. So today we are going to learn two theorems. Theorems for what? Well, moment of inertia and radius of gyration. I explained. Fine. Problem is in both these concepts I mention rotational axis, axis of rotation like this. So important is not center of mass, important is also along which axis the rigid body is rotating. Fine. So this, uh, these two theorems are going to help us in a very simple manner but very useful that is uh, I will give the general name that is theorems fine first is parallel axis in some books the spelling of the axis is mentioned like axis axis bank type of situation and in some it's like es so I am also not very confident about this so maybe I can write I, AXIS or ES please don't mind it parallel axis and second is perpendi perpendicular axis fine so there are two theorems parallel axis theorem perpendicular axis theorem what's the use well use is these two theorems help us to find moment of inertia, moment of inertia about any given axis is still not clear even not clear to me fine whatever is mentioned let us analyze like this let us say once again this duster will come to help us this duster is with me a cubical body fine now let us say I hinge this duster at this point and then it is rotating like this fine. So moment of inertia there are two right now one is about the center of mass that is for a regular shape body is at the geometrical center and another is about this point. So, these two theorems will help me to find the net moment of inertia of this body if the body is not rotating about its center of mass. One possibility is I drilled then hanged a long nail over here and then it is rotating. No problem center of mass moment of inertia. But if it is like this, then situation is different. So a rigid body may rotate along its center of mass, may not be. So these two theorems will help me to find the net final moment of inertia in this situation. Fine. So one by one, I will ex uh, start this discussion. Fine. First is parallel axis theorem I will mention. So please allow me to clean this and start writing uh, the definition actually in your CBSC course curricula only statement it is mentioned fine but what I will do I will elaborate the discussion at some higher scale okay just by mentioning some good examples nothing like that and proof is not mentioned there so I am following that particular uh, you can say guideline only statement so first my suggestion to all of you I will try to write down the statement in simple words you have to uh, remember it fine that is essentially required. 
So, first is parallel axis theorem. Oh, -ho, that P should be capital parallel axis theorem. Fine. So, define this parallel axis theorem. I will draw a simple diagram any rigid body. Let us say the center of mass of this rigid body is at this point. Okay. A B this is one axis about which the body is rotating and name of this point is O fine. Uh, let us say let us make it different way because it is slightly smaller I have to show two points and if you are watching this lecture on uh, mobile phone then this diagram may be a small one. This one is bigger fine let us say two possible axis of rotation fine. So, now first thing parallel axis parallel ok. Now, let us give the name that is A B K L. So, axis A B is parallel with axis K L ok. Now, let us say name of this point is O, name of this point is C, let us say it is center of mass, C means center of mass and this gapping is a small h, fine and from here I am considering a mass m i at a distance r i. After watching my video about moment of inertia and radius of gyration, I am sure you are comfortable with R i and M i. M i is any particle, i ith particle at a distance uh, R i th distance from the center of mass. Now, in this scenario, first I would like to mention the statement of parallel axis theorem. Listen one by one because I will have to recall it back moment of inertia of a rigid body about any axis a b fine. So, moment moment of inertia of any rigid body of any a rigid body of a rigid body about any axis of any moment of inertia of a rigid body about any axis a b about of a rigid body about any axis a b fine moment of inertia of a rigid body about any axis a b is equal to moment of inertia is equal to equal to moment of inertia I am not writing the complete word, but simple m i that is equal to moment of inertia of body about. Now, as uh, from last few videos I am explaining all these things, but let us say once again I am uh, explaining. Say for example, here this is mentioned one mark fine. So, in your school exams what will happen the same old story few questions very short one mark then two marks then three marks then four or five marks then hots category high 
order thinking skills fine so those questions are slightly different so what we tried in this particular video where there is a collection of 10 questions or so we tried our best to incorporate each and every category reason is simple here i'm not only explaining the answer but i'm also explaining you the method how you should answer say for example this category that is very very important category just one mark so here you have to write down few words maybe sometimes just one word and you will get full marks so you should know how much time and efforts you should put for any specific question if it is for five marks you should provide to uh, explain the diagram uh, definitions uh, you you can use colorful pencils but if it is two marks or so you have to simply write down one or two lines that's it fine so let's start this first question does center of mass of a rigid body lie always on the body so it is the very fundamental question fine the question is about center of mass is it like that center of mass always lie on the body in the body within the body answer is no fine now for example consider the case of ring ring means like this where is the center of mass this way it is not on the body and there are two three terms associated center of gravity geometrical center center of mass fine I tried my best to pick questions associated with all these three terms. So, for regular shape bodies, I explained this concept in starting of this particular chapter theory videos. For regular shape bodies, CM that is center of mass coincides with the geometrical center of the body. Say for example, this ring, the geometrical center is the center, this point and this is radius. So, here the center of mass coincides with the geometrical center of the body, fine. So, center of mass, it is not necessary that it will always lie on the body, but for regular shape body, center of mass may coincide with the geometrical center of the body, fine. Now, here comes question number 2, it is again in one mark category what is the position vector of center of mass of two particles of equal masses so here position vector of two particle system center of mass you can find so position vector is something which represents that center of mass fine so position vector of center of mass of two particles of equal masses so here you can write down at the most just one line of uh, let us say 5, 6 words and what that may, uh, line may be that uh, uh, in short term you should not write down like that the uh, position vector of center of mass of two particles of equal mass is not like that simply write down one statement that is it should be at average of it should be at average of at average of average of position vector position vector of two particles of two particles at average of position vector of two particles. So, this answer is more than enough about this one mark question, fine. So, here you can say that sometimes it may happen that you have to write down one, two, three, four, five words. This add off they are not countable, fine. Then comes 
this question number three and here what is important this two marks so question number three and four each with two marks so it is like that in this particular uh, question you have to write down maybe a line or so a seven to ten words or something like that why do we prefer to use a wrench with a long arm it is like that suppose i want to open the screw of uh, the wheel of my car let's say it got punctured so i need a different type of device that is known as wrench wrench or uh, a device which is used for opening the nut bolts of the wheel so that we can detach it another step we can attach fine so uh, question is long arm okay long arm suppose you want to open a screw of a small device let's say mixer juicer so you need a wrench which is long enough so that you can operate it properly what exactly the cause if the screwdriver is of very short length it is not going to be easy for you to open the screw the cause is simple fine because it is rotational motion and in rotational motion important is not force important is what important is torque fine torque is what force cross product with the position vector perpendicular to that point fine so the answer is tau is equal to r cross f now f is something that i am applying and there is a limit for f for me now if i increase the r then torque is going to be more so more torque easily i can tight or untight the screw fine so because of this reason because of this formula because of this term we can easily open consider the case of the room in which you are right now watching my video i'm sure there is a door and the handle of the door to open the door is at the one extreme and the clippings which is attaching the door with the wall is at another end imagine you fix the handle at the mid of the door 